Today on The Hookup, we're going to take a look at the new revision of the Sonoff Basic and figure out if it's still useful. And then we're going to talk a little bit about circuit board design. This is an old Sonoff Basic, the one that you've probably seen in countless YouTube videos. But if you purchase your Sonoff within the last two months, you probably received this the Sonoff RF R2 Power version 1.0. Today, we're gonna to figure out how to use this new version of the Sonoff Basic and talk a little bit about why ITED may have made the revision. First, let's talk about what hasn't changed. In the middle of the board, you still have all the pinholes that you need to flash your device with custom firmware. You've got RX, TX, ground, and 3.3 volts. GPIO 0 is still tied to the push button, so you can just hold it down during power on to enter flash mode. And in that sense, the process of flashing your Sonoff hasn't really changed at all. But if you're looking to do anything more advanced than that, you'll quickly notice that instead of five pinholes like the old Sonoff Basic, the new version only has four. And that's because GPIO 14 is no longer broken out. Instead, People have been setting up their external devices using the solder pad labeled key, which corresponds to GPIO2. In this video, I'm going to advise against that, since GPIO2 is one of the most troublesome pins on the ESP8266. Last summer, I made a video about the quirks of the GPIO pins on the ESP8266. And as you can see, GPIO2 has two main problems. First, the pin goes high during the boot process. So if you have a device that turns on and off when voltage is applied, it's gonna kick on for about 400 milliseconds when the Sonoff reboots. Second, you can see that if the pin is pulled low, meaning that it's attached to ground, the ESP8266 will go into one of its alternate boot modes, which won't run the main program on your Sonoff and will therefore result in a non-working device. The fix for this is pretty simple. We know the other two pins that are available to us are TX and RX. And you can see that in my diagram, TX corresponds to GPIO1 and RX corresponds to GPIO3. Both of these pins are also high on boot, which is unfortunate. But you can see that GPIO3 won't cause boot failure when pulled low. That means that the best option for hooking up your external switch or sensor is going to be GPIO3, the RX pin. The only downside of that is that the serial connection isn't going to work anymore in this configuration, but you don't really need to worry about that since you've already flashed your Sonoff. If you run into any other issues using the new version of the Sonoff Basic, post them down in the comments and I'll try my best to help you out. If you're interested in the reasons why IT may have made this revision in the first place, then keep on watching. The Sonoff seemed to be a pretty good product at an impossible price. So why did IT do a complete board revision? Some possible motivations could be electrical certificate compliance, cheaper production costs, discouraging hacking and modification, or maybe just safety for safety's sake. I don't work for IT, so I can't be sure of the exact reason, but there's no doubt in my mind that the Sonoff RF R2 Power is a more thoughtfully designed circuit board than the one that was in the original Sonoff Basic. The most obvious change is the shift from using the circuit board traces to wires for carrying mains voltage from the relay to the terminals. Most people don't put enough load on their Sonoff Basics to cause an overcurrent situation, but the length of the traces on the Basic were unusually long for carrying mains voltage. And to alleviate this issue, IT used to add extra solder to these traces to decrease their resistance. The problem with using globs of solder is that they aren't always uniform in thickness, and that can lead to hot spots on the trace, which can ultimately lead to thermal failure. The wires on the new R2 version of the Sonoff Basic are a far better solution for carrying current but they also have the added benefit of increasing the separation between the high and low voltage sides of the board, which is another place that this board shows its thoughtful redesign. On the old Sonoff Basic, there was a separation between the AC mains voltage and the DC voltage, but the rectified high voltage DC passed pretty close to the low voltage area. I've never had a problem with any of my Sonoff Basics, but it would be theoretically possible for a surge of power to cause an arc between the traces in these areas, sending high voltage into the low voltage outputs. It's possible that IT did this redesign to comply with a specific certification agency, but it would likely still fail most of the major safety certifications due to the fact that the Sonoff Basic is intended to be used where the end user is likely to come in contact with it. There's even a button on top for the end user to interact with. By having this button, IT adds a slew of extra safety requirements related to voltage division and also grounding. 
which we know the Sonoff Basic famously lacks. Another major upside to the new redesign is the fact that the ESP chip, which is actually an ESP8285 instead of an ESP8266, is on a huge ground plane with a bunch of small holes called vias punched in it to connect the top ground plane to the bottom one. This helps significantly with heat dissipation and it should allow the ESP chip to run a bit cooler than on the previous version of the Sonoff Basic. Using the ESP8285 also saves IT to few cents per unit, since it's basically just an ESP8266 that has one megabyte of built-in flash memory. And that means that they don't have to include an external flash memory chip on the board like on the previous Sonoff Basic. And the last thing that I just can't seem to understand at all is why they chose to break out GPIO2 instead of any of the other pins that don't have boot problems. Part of me is wondering if this is to discourage modification of their devices, and that would be a real bummer since the DIY community is largely responsible for the success of the Sonoff Basic in the first place. But it's also understandable since every picture that I've ever seen of a melted Sonoff was the result of improper modification or blatant misuse. If I missed any obvious changes on this board, let me know down in the comments section. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up so that YouTube will suggest it to other makers and DIYers. Thank you to all of my patrons over at Patreon for your continued support. If you'd like to support content like this video, check out the links down in the description. If you're looking to buy one of these new Sonoff Basics, I can confirm that the Amazon listing that I have in the description is shipping the new version only. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.